Hey everyone, I'm Kevin with Victory 4x4. In today's video, we're gonna be installing our interior cargo floor in this 2017 Toyota 4Runner. So we're gonna begin with assembly of the floor frame. You can kind of see the parts I have laid out here. There's gonna be a front and rear, and these are gonna be both the sides and the center rails. Now to get started on this, I'm gonna grab the front section along with one of these side rails. You can see kind of how they're going to orient here. There's going to be two bolt holes in the back edge of this front rail that correspond with the bolt holes in the end of the side rail. Once you've got that figured out, you're just going to want to grab the quarter 20 button heads with washers and serrated flange nuts from your bolt pack. Then it's just a matter of lining those up and installing the hardware. Then just grab the other side rail and repeat that process over on the other side. Once you have both of these side rails in place, you can then grab the center rail assembly. This is also just gonna bolt to the back side of that front rail using quarter 20 bolts. But on this one, you will need to pay attention to these radius cutouts. So you're just gonna be looking for the end with the radius cutouts closest to it. And that's what's gonna mount to the front rail. Now we're ready to install the rear rail. So this one, you also have to pay attention to. It's gonna have one flange that contains all these round mounting holes. That one's gonna step up and mount against the back side of both the side rails and the center rail here. Now again here, you're using that same quarter 20 button head hardware and just pay attention kind of for the cleanest look to run these from outside in, in this case, so the nuts can be hidden inside of these rails. So now you have the frame loosely assembled. You can grab a 5/32ths hex to begin tightening things up. Now you may want a 7 16 wrench just in case those flange nuts aren't biting on the back side, but it shouldn't really be necessary. Now lastly, you're gonna have two of these nut strips that need to be installed here to the inside of this flange. For that, you just wanna make sure that the two pre-installed nuts wind up facing up so that the floor panels can be installed to them later on. And then it's just that same quarter 20 hardware from the outside in. So once you have this assembled, we can kind of set this off to the side for now and do just a little bit of work inside the vehicle before this can be installed. Now here inside the vehicle, you're gonna have four of these cargo tie downs that need to be removed. So you can kind of flip the hook back out of the way and then using a small panel tool, pick, or even a flat screwdriver, you can kind of pop these covers up and out of the way. Then you'll just need a 10 millimeter socket to get this factory bolt removed. And that should allow this entire hook assembly to just lift out of its pocket. And once you have these front two cargo hooks removed, you can then grab this entire trim panel and kind of pull and lift up to remove it from the vehicle. Now here at the rear of the vehicle, we're gonna be installing two of these nut strips to secure the frame that we previously assembled. The way these go in, they're just gonna slide underneath the factory plastic trim down here by that factory cargo hook and they're gonna secure in place using that mounting location. And what we found is on the passenger side specifically, there's a little plastic flange underneath this trim that's in the way, preventing you from sliding this into place. So we do need to do just a little bit of disassembly here to allow you to make a small modification to that before this can go in. So to gain access to that, I grabbed a little plastic pry tool and we're gonna be removing this rear plastic trim section. So I'm just gonna get under this back edge, and then you can kind of work your way across, releasing these clips to kind of free it up. And then it should just pop right off of this outer panel. And then it can be set off to the side. Now with that out of the way, we can access the hold down clips here for the rear carpet. Those can be removed with your pry tool or a small screwdriver. And you're basically just gonna to need to do this one here in the outside corner. And then you can kind of pull this carpet back and just fold it out of the way temporarily. That'll give you access in here to trim that little flange. So for this, we just have a little box cutter razor blade. You can get in here and just carefully trim back that thin plastic flange underneath this edge. And once you've done that, this part can just be reassembled. So now 
You can install these nut strips. Here we're working on the driver's side. So you can just kind of pay attention to the orientation of this, making sure this flange faces forward toward the front of the vehicle. And then you can work this in under the factory plastic trim panel and get it passed through over here to that original hook mounting location. Now after you get that lined up with that factory mounting location, you'll want to find the M6 button head bolt and a washer in your bolt pack and then just temporarily install that with a few threads for now just to kind of hold that in the proper location as we get the frame in place. Now you can grab your pre-assembled frame and begin sliding it into the rear of the vehicle. Now just make sure from an orientation standpoint that the logo cutout is facing the rear of the vehicle and then You'll kind of slide that over those front mounts until it drops into place. And then this will tuck in nicely just behind this factory plastic trim. Now in the front side of this frame, there's gonna be two slotted holes. In those locations, you'll be reusing the factory hex bolts that were holding down those two front tie down points. And you're actually bolting right back into those same threaded locations. Now here at the rear of the frame, we're gonna be bolting the frame itself to those nut strips we previously installed. Now for this, just because the nut strip is being pushed up by the carpet, you're gonna to wanna to push something, I just have my Allen wrench here, through this top bolt hole. That kinda of allows me to manipulate the nut strip. And then you can line things up and install one of those quarter 20 bolts. Now you can do that in each of these slots and then go do the same thing over on the other side. Now that you have all of the frame mounting hardware loosely started, you can come back and remove these M6 bolts. Now what we're gonna be doing here is reinstalling the factory tie down hooks over top of our mounting bracket. Since this is a hole that's open to atmosphere underneath, we are gonna add and recommend adding just a little bit of RTV in this location. I'm just kind of putting a little bit of it down in the threaded hole portion underneath there. That way the bolt has to pass through it as this is all assembled. And then we can simply drop this into place and tighten each of these up using a four millimeter hex. Then just repeat that same process over on the passenger side. So now I'm just gonna kinda pull my frame back so that it's nice and parallel to this factory plastic and then reach in toward the front and tighten those two mounting bolts with our 10 millimeter socket. And then lastly, with a 532nd hex, we can tighten the four bolts here at the back of the frame that run into those hidden nut strips. So now we have the frame fully secured in the vehicle. We're ready to begin installing our floor panels. Now with these, any accessories you plan to install need to be bolted in place before this goes down in the vehicle. For that, we're gonna provide you with these bolt-in nut tabs. Now the orientation of these is really gonna be dependent on which accessory you're installing, whether it be the drawer assembly or the fridge slide, and you'll need to check that specific installation video to get those details. But basically these nut tabs are gonna have a pre-installed nut on one end, a hole on the other, so that they can be slid underneath the panel, bolted in on the one side with a button head and a nut, and then you'll be able to then thread through and tighten in your accessories with those in place. Now for this video, we're just installing the floor assembly. So I can take this panel and simply slide it in, making sure I've got the correct end here with the three slightly slotted holes that are gonna line up with the three pre-installed nuts here under the frame. Then I'll just be using more of the quarter 20 bolts with washers from the hardware pack to get those installed at each of these locations. Now, as always, just make sure you're leaving these a little bit loose as you're getting them installed so you can make any minor adjustments as needed before we tighten things up. So then once you have everything tight, your installation's complete. Now again, be sure to check out the individual product pages for the actual mounting layouts for these accessories. 
And as always, if you have any questions about this installation or any other Victory product, you can always reach out to us. You can email us at info at victory4x4.com or just give us a call at 269-459-8447.